wanna I wanna do a series of videos about the love of God and different aspects starting right from creation and working up to the cross and maybe even to our lives right now so I, I ask you all to encourage me if you like this uh, to keep going because sometimes uh, I get started on something and then I get distracted I go on to, to something else so that said God and the meaning of love because we throw that word around like crazy especially in our, in our culture in the English or American culture that word is used so much that it's kind of lost its meaning so we know in the Bible it says that God is love and I believe that I believe that especially when you understand a little bit better what what love is like everything that's grand and big and of God we're gonna spend the rest of this life learning and growing and maturing in our understanding about what these things are so we're never gonna fully comprehend that but I want to explain my concept of love in creation to illustrate the magnificence of that love and that it had to be one it had to be one and I want you to visualize if you can with me and and think about this really think about this before there was anything you know I can't say once upon a time because it was before there was time before there was time before there was space before there was anything to place in that space and operate in time however they would all there was was God there were before the angels before anything he was self-sufficient he was obviously in need of nothing he had zero needs want maybe that's something else but he had no needs now remember this is a spirit God is a spirit so he occupies no space he doesn't eat he doesn't sleep he doesn't have any of those needs in any way shape or form in need of nothing try so grasp that and then he chose he chose literally for there to be something before there's anything there's only him he decides that there would be something in the beginning that that means our beginning not his beginning because we can't comprehend eternity in that sense the one who was without beginning the self-existent one as his name means in the Old Testament Yahweh so here he is he decides that there will be a beginning and who is it for it's for the souls the people he is going to create and put in that place where the heavens and the earth are in the beginning God created the heavens and the earth it was obviously for us because he had no need for it and think about it all the implications of that all the difficulties all the problems all the problem solving all the long suffering all the frustrations God repented it says that in the Bible someone I saw somebody said it it mentions it like 38 times I don't know the exact amount of times even if it was just one time repented he turned from something he did to do something else and it wasn't because what he did was bad or wrong. In no way, shape, or form do I see it that way. It's because he showed love by giving life. And that life turned around and slapped him in the face. And took other lives. Lied and, and didn't show faith and killed and just did all these things. But he had to know that, and you can argue by it. I don't think he knew all the details because he's a good guy. He knows good. I don't think he knew or understood the depth of the perversity of the crazy things that humanity would do. He didn't know that. That's why he repented, because it was so amazing. There was just in a negative way, obviously. But still, he persevered. He long suffered it. He stuck with us through all this. Now, if you look at it from that perspective, 
you'll be less inclined, I, I believe, to have the woe is me, oh God, why type scenario going on in your mind from time to time. I'm not saying it won't happen because you know, I, for one, have not experienced some of the, the horrendous things that people can experience. And I'm not saying I would never say, oh God, why me? I'm a human being. I'm susceptible to all these things. I'm just saying, for your consideration, consider what he decided to do. It was a decision. He could have gone on forever without worrying about any of this, without bringing people into the picture and all the problems that entails, all the complications, all the long suffering, all the patience, all the needs. Because he didn't just bring us in and say, hey, perform or go to hell. He didn't. No matter what you think, what religion teaches you or what you've heard about religion, you, if you heard bad things about it, you probably heard pretty accurately. That's why my wife and I are against religion. But when you look at it from his standpoint, you know, there's analogies. A parent brings a kid into the world. That, that, that has some similarities, but it's not as perfect as God himself. God is the only representative of what he's done. But you can't see it. People make decisions. Should we have a kid? Shouldn't we? Oh, it's going to be this, it's going to be that, it's going to be college, it's going to be diapers, it's going to be all of the things you got to deal with. And, they, and that is a sacrifice. That is wonderful, but it's not limitless in its patience and its long-suffering and its kindness and its love and its tenderness and its acceptance and, and the ultimate sacrifice of him coming here. But like I say, I don't want to get ahead. I'm just talking about the creation. Just think about that when you get a moment alone and think about it. there was nothing once upon a before time once before a time, there was no time, and no you, and no me, and no ground, and no sky, and no anything. And he decided to do that. That was an act of love. It was an act of tremendous love. Because as it turns out, I don't know if you've uh, looked around, but it seems apparent to me that most of those souls he created are in just full-blown, 100% turbocharged, nuclear-powered rejection of him they want nothing to do with them even the people that claim his name would rather hold on to and embrace something called religion and there he is just just little old god by himself just saying do you want me do you want me i, mean, I know he gave the law and everything that, but then he fulfilled the law so he could be free from the law and people still don't want just him Think about that. I mean, seriously, folks, think about that. He's an individual. He has a heart. He really does. He's a person. He's not a man, but he became a man for you. And he has feelings and thoughts. And I, you may see, think these things are blasphemous. You know, God knows everything. He knows absolutely everything. Well, we're his children, and I think he has hopes for us. And he doesn't make our decisions for us. He lets us make decisions. He's here to help us when we want the help. But when we reject him, that's our free will. Adam rejected him. So those things mean something, just like they would mean to you. If you care about someone, they reject you. We all know how that feels. But he doesn't respond like we do. He doesn't. He's there to the end. I'll never leave you nor forsake you. There had to be someone for him to leave or forsake so he could say, I'll never do it. And he was the one who decided to create all those people, even knowing that they would do that, that they would reject him. And that's amazing. That's amazing. I hope I didn't complicate this. I wanted to make it simple. There once was nothing but him, but the creator. And he decided to do that, to create this and all the stuff that went along with it. And he doesn't hold his nose and love you anyway. He loves you because he is good. Because he decided to take away all that sin and all your screw ups. He took it all away. He took it all out of the picture just so you and him could be together. He wiped the slate clean. That's what he did. Him and him alone. He gave you this beautiful gift of life. Well, I'll personalize it to me. I don't want you to think I'm pointing a finger. He gave you this perfect gift of life and I ruined it. I screwed the whole thing up. And he said, well, I'm just going to wipe that away because I love you. And it's not in spite of anything. 
Uh, and I'm not holding my nose. Like I said, he's not disgusted with me. He just decided to just put his arms out anyway. No, he decided to just wipe it away. By himself, he purged my sins. That's what it says about Jesus in Hebrews. Who being the brightness of his glory and the express image of his person. His gods and upholding all things by the word of his power. By himself purged our sins. He purged my sins because he's good, because he wanted to be with me. Even though I wrecked the house, I wrecked the place up, I tore it down, I burned it up, whatever you want to call it. He did that. That is love. That is pure love. He created the object of his love. And that's you. And that's me. And he gave us a choice to look at that and say, that's awesome. I want to know that love. I want to know that perfect love that was self-sustaining in need of nothing and decided to make someone. And he did it. And then he thought about you when he was up there on that cross dying. I believe that. I really do. Timeless God can do that. He can think of all of us. Every single one of us is little babies right through our life. He thought about us. That's my little child. I'm doing this for her. I'm doing this for him because I love him. I hope they choose me. I hope he chooses me. I hope she chooses me. But either way, I love them. They ain't going to darkness. They're not going to go there because I sent them there. Because I love them. And I'm going to take away all the stuff that sent them there. Now that's love. You got to admit that, folks. Anyway, thanks for watching. God bless you all in Jesus' name.